watching this glorified advert masquerading as a movie from an objective vantage point is mission friggin' impossible. With its relentless and, I'll admit, brilliant marketing campaign, the hype and deliberate discourse surrounding this piece of shit film worked so well as to confuse people, mainly women, into believing it actually passes for cinema. That, it must fucking certainly does not. I went into Barbie with the intention of judging it as a film, leaving aside all the political nonsense and feminist focused lens to measure it for its storytelling and narrative. But given that the movie wants everything its own way, capriciously skipping between supposed satire, kids movie and a girls just want to have fun extravaganza, all while unironically pretending to be oh so meta to flog a catalogue of asinine products, it simply is impossible to do so. The main feature of Barbie Land should have been a gigantic roller coaster, the construction of which defined the very laws of physics to foreshadow the intellectually challenged, undiagnosed mental illness of its script and plot. To say it's up its own tight little bleached ass is the understatement of the century. I can't recall ever seeing a movie so smug, brimming with the belief of its own irrefutable humour, a piece of entertainment so proud of itself it makes the mise en scène look subtle by comparison. To set the scene, we're subjected to a painfully unfunny opening 10 minutes where all the characters of the same name greet each other as they do every single day in a constant ping pong match of high Barbie, high Ken that would amuse only the likes of Forrest Gump and even he would grow tired of it after only a few rallies. Sure, it establishes the world okay, but it's just annoying after 5 rounds, let alone 5 minutes, fucking synapse snapping after 10. It's also something that could have been utilised better if the Barbies simply addressed one another as the film went on, not crammed in all at once with some manufactured auto-tune pop music playing underneath. How the movie can come across so gleefully in love with itself after a round of jokes barely even amusing to a fetus in utero is simply astonishing. As if the actors, along with Mattel, are more than blissfully aware of the cinematic fraud they're about to commit donning their best Patrick Bateman grins while the brainwashed audience claps along like retarded seals awaiting their next fix of stupid. Credit where credit's due, however, because in between this Chinese water torture comedy routine, the world we're in and its rules are depicted reasonably well when we see Barbie sit down for breakfast, sipping on a teacup of oxygen and daintily nibbling upon dust particles of non-existent food that'd make an aspiring anorexic gush like a river. Writing-wise, this shows us how Barbie Land works, hinting at the fact that, though obviously dolls, there's a slight connection to how they're played with in the real world, which does come to be relevant, albeit through exposition cheaper than the plastic they're made of later down the line. Though the sceptic in me couldn't help but suspect that despite it working as a plot device, it was simply a workaround for the real motive of the so-called film to flog some worthless shite. I didn't see Made in China underneath that teapot though, so let's just give it the first of many, many benefits of the doubt. Like an insufferable, spoiled, entitled little shit, this movie grinds you down the longer it goes on. And by goes on, it feels like a never-ending fucking story, an I.U. story in the loosest imaginable sense of the word. The plot's slapped together with all the care of a dog's dinner, so I'll just stick with the basic premise in equality to its own exerted effort. Once the world of Barbie is somewhat established, Barbie's perplexed by her sudden influx of existential angst, where thoughts of death and the appearance of cellulite become the impetus to take some serious action. As it turns out, the only cure to this is to venture into the real world and find her owner, whose depressive mood is causing Barbie to feel all menstrual. Wait, is this the first time this has ever occurred to any of the Barbies in Barbie Land? Seems kind of convenient that- Shh, don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Okay, so it turns out the Barbies come to somewhat reflect how they're treated in the real world. From their mood, psychological well-being, physical appearance, and however the Mattel script conveniently says they do. If that was true, I'm still confused as to why I didn't see the odd Barbie walking about, dressed from head to toe, in nothing but cum. I guess Bukaki Barbie, Scatological Barbie, and Golden Shower Barbie are all being saved for the Blu-ray. 
Soon we're paired with Weird Barbie, but actually Morpheus Barbie. Weird. Weird. Who explains there's a hole in the space-time continuum between the two worlds because of Barbie's lack of a gash or death wish or something. Great Scott. I don't know. It's dumb. Explained on a map drawn with crayon, probably in a nod to its screenplay. By this time, you're begging for Barbie to get her cellulite ass to LA, so who gives a fuck? Ken sneaks along because Margot Robbie doesn't have the chops to carry this film on her own, and so begins the long voyage with a whole host of tits and teeth subplots that compete with one another for attention like a super sweet 16 MTV reunion, each inevitably capitulating under the weight of this surface level elongated advert of a film whenever the opportunity to flog something's been milked for all it's worth. For example, there's a scene inside the headquarters of Mattel where, of course, the men are just as moronic as they are in Barbie land, where Barbie enters, of her own volition of course, and agrees to get back in the box for the sake of saving Barbie land and returning to the status quo or fucking whatever. Initially, it seems as if she's going to go back to a warehouse and, maybe in Toy Story fashion, see how she's not unique in the least, and we'll have to come to accept that rather than special, she's just another copycat doll, paralleling the ills of the human condition, putting her existential crisis into overdrive along the road to eventual and hopefully humbled self-acceptance. Instead, the movie bottles it completely and only included this scene so all those who took a selfie inside the same stupid box could feel a vicarious nonsensical kinship with Barbie, having done the same fucking thing as her. Talk about spectacle within a fucking spectacle. The movie ain't for kids, but those who enjoy it clearly have the same fucking mentality. Again, all the scene is is a further acknowledgement of the movie's marketing campaign, a grotesque, self-referential and ultimately pointless addition that hijacked from protests of the suffragette movement for its own tasteless agenda to sell more stupid dolls. It's surprising they didn't release a whole collection of Barbies based on women from the past, the same way Enola Holmes erected all those statues of overlooked sisters. Here's Chain to the Railings, Barbie. Hey, hey, any bird who wants to chain herself to my railings and suffer a jet movement gets my money. <laughs> what about Victorian spinster Barbie, where her not having a vagina never made more sense until now? Looky, looky here, it's Hunger Strike Barbie. Oh, wait. That's every single Barbie in history until obesity hit the US and we all started pretending fat girls are hot and sexy just the way that they are. Looking for something more modern? Here's Ran Through by Chad Barbie. Comes with a free beta. Mattel makes out as if it's totally fine with being mocked, bro. But if that was really the case, Barbie would have woken up in China, getting reassembled by starving slave children and surrounded by thousands of deformed and reject Barbies. It's not cool and wacky to pretend you're stupid when all you're doing is laughing all the way to the nearest bank. Another insanely depressing element of this cod fodder of a film is how it showcases just how low we've come as a species. How it exemplifies that the fucking retarded have truly taken over. But the greatest thing about this piece is how it inadvertently taps into the modern discourse at play where an era of rampant propagandized narcissism runs amok in the mindset of many a woman whether fat, ugly, mid-tier or beautiful. Not that it matters since all of whom are just plain fucking delusional. The message of this film is put yourself first no matter what all for a false sense of individualistic entitlement and professional victimhood. It actively promotes self-serving traits, pissing over anything that might in any way compromise it. It does delve here and there on the difficulties of being human, but only ever on the touch and go, like excusing itself in a restaurant to powder its nose, shoehorned in to make it seem deep, before opting for a professional victim meltdown that'd make She-Hulk turn pink instead of green. The heart of the film monologue, for instance, is where the movie decides to rampantly eat itself out. <laughs> having got too turned on by Meta looking at its own reflection and laughing at its own shitty jokes. The very film equivalent of an auto cunnilingus interview with Rachel Zegler. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. Or Brie Larson. Is that like a personal attack or something? I guess that's why they couldn't include those self-obsessed thoughts in the film. 
With those three gushing over themselves every single take, the set design would have been soaked and destroyed more times than during the production of Waterworld. As for some of the other characters, meh. The mum's a middle-aged woman playing with a doll for Christ's sake, probably because her daughter turned out to be an insufferable pseudo-commie prick, both there solely to join the autoerotic girl boss orgy at the end. The only dude who gets to have a bit of fun is Gosling, whose wry grin seems suspiciously knowing of how generally awful the movie will be. Then you've got the creator of Barbie, who's a ghost or, I don't know, just old, there for some Lion King rip-off shit and more cringe dialogue near the end. Uh, who else? Beta Sinner pops up as a Beta Barbie man for a few scenes. Will Ferrell as Elf runs about a bit, not being funny. Mm, that's all I remember, really. Aside from a bit of diversity thrown in because ESG, along with a trans and a fatty, the rest are as hopelessly forgettable as the plot, script, direction, tinnitus-inducing music, prostituted themes, Hallmark card feminism, cutesy-wootsy makeup application psychology, and hubba-bubba original flavour bubblegum philosophy. As I read in another review, Barbie is the movie equivalent of live, laugh and love. Makes sense on the surface, I guess but says absolutely fuck all. It's like that other big scam of a book, The Secret, only in infomercial format, desperately manifesting itself into an abortion of a movie. When the credits finally roll, you're left feeling like a used inanimate doll yourself, a prostitute with no name, past a sell by date way back when, forced back into consciousness just to be clockwork orange by its woeful, amoral message, as it fucks you from behind in your shit pussy, having already stolen your wallet. Barbie isn't fucking cinema. It's a relentless cash grab product placement, packaged inside a commercial stolen from a meme with a tweet thread for a screenplay. A two hour shit show spawns straight out of the mentally ill medium of social media, where existential crises can be rectified via a soundbite, emotions are held up to the highest order just because they're felt, glorified beyond criticism or any rationality, merely because they're supposedly feminine and look good on an Instagram feed. Any scene examined can be flipped like a flimsy McDonald's meat patty, from satire to kids film, to it's just a bit of fun, to you're just a fucking incel. In that pisses me off because I should be the one with the girls. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I'm gorgeous. But you girls don't see it. I don't understand why you, you're you so repulsed by me. Why won't you give me a chance? It's ridiculous. Repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result isn't the definition of insanity. It's watching Barbie and going along with the flabbergasting rhetoric that it's actually in any way even halfway passable as a movie. To quote Bill Hicks, it's a piece of shit. Sure, I could look at Barbie as the world flipped upside down. Ken is a woman, not just in Barbie land, but the real world too, where feminism has become so ludicrous, there's the belief that you can do and be anything just because it takes your fancy, only for the real world to laugh in your face and break you apart. But when you get deep-throated by a literal montage of real-life mothers and a speech that recounts everything it's already fucking said, like watching a sick dog eating its own feces after puking, the satire is just as degraded and used up as your brain cells. Barbie has no core identity, and deep down it fucking knows it. So in defense of its false self, it acts like an entitled brat the entire runtime, or whilst airbrushed with so much self-satisfaction, you'll be begging for bulimic Barbie to turn up just so you can relate to one of them. Not that you will, however, for every single character in this flick, whether plastic or supposedly human, is a colossal prick. I'll say this too, and it's not even in critique of Margot Robbie's subpar performance, which, given she's playing an every woman, is somewhat understandable, but she's too fucking old to be playing Barbie, especially in the stereotypical sense. I guess at least Mattel stuck to their MO and got their typecasting right, because Margot's clearly got more plastic in her than flesh, but she still looks like she's in her mid to late thirties. Whereas Barbie, in the societal consciousness, is blatantly in her prime breeding years of early to mid-twenties. Robbie doesn't look like stereotypical Barbie, but more like close to hitting the wall Barbie instead, where her dried up ovaries will soon pave the way for a household of stinky straight cats. Oh, no, 
She doesn't even have the thigh gap so intrinsic to the doll. Sure, you can argue how it's subverting expectations, blah, 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 but making the main Barbie closer to Baron Barbie further symbolizes the deluded mindset of its main target audience, making her relatable only through their collective mental illness and total divorce from reality. The campaign for this tripe began when Amy Schumer, another unfunny, unholy, unlikable prick, was rumored to play Barbie many moons ago. This spectacle was spawned, spread via incrudelity and its hilariously stupid premise, to pique the interest of all the land whales and blue head spinsters because Mattel knew they'd become the film's gullible foot soldiers, whose limitless grudge against men would be enough to ensure their unquestioned loyalty to this sorry fucking excuse of entertainment. That's where the true story of this marketing scam posing as a movie began. More money was spent on building the hype than the film. From the Marmite marketing campaigns to the selfie encouraging life-size packages scattered about the globe like tossed away Big Mac boxes you see on the side of the streets. The film's more of a documentary on how to fool the world into thinking an advert's actually a film. It makes Clueless and Legally Blonde look like flawless masterpieces by comparison. At least they were made with some fucking heart and didn't shit all over the notion of love. Cause Barbie isn't Barbie, she's fucking Kaiser Soze. Cause, spoiler alert, the twat who wants a twat gets a twat in the end. That's Barbie's whole arc. Realising that being a woman isn't so easy, but at the same time more important than anything else in the whole goddamn universe. Yay. All hail the deity that is the vagina. You go girl, now you can get ran through by LA Chad and Tyrone, get hooked on Prozac, plastic surgery and the morning after pill, work for a faceless company that takes away any chance of you putting that vagina to biological use, all before you move into your dream $3,000 a month one bed studio flat that stinks of cat litter and cheap Chardonnay. But you're an independent gal, never mind how you're still a fucking slave to a company that couldn't give two shits about you. You're your own woman now, and that's all that matters, so long as you have your own cunt to show for it. There's some rigmarole online about how women will drop a dude like a stone if he says one word about how shit this stupid movie is. Well, good. Only a twat could follow a twat character arc and be happy that the twat got what she wanted. The teeth in those vaginas are not any gnashes you ever want to be bitten by, gentlemen. So here, here to their consumer-obsessed and social media-fueled stupidity. Anyone who can't see this movie for the piece of shit that it is can just fuck off and die already.